Hello everyone, welcome to week three of the Boho Prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Today I want to have a go at making um, boho style journals and notebooks, that kind of thing. Maybe a couple of embellishments if we have time um, as well. Um, now, there has just been an enormous amount of participation with this prompt in the Facebook group. And for anybody else who wants to follow along with our prompts, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Um, but a couple of you are still struggling to get your head um, around what boho um, really means. Um, now, it's it's very, very broad. I mean, think bold patterns, bold colours, you know, quite often clashing mandanas, which um, this is here as well. Think hippie style, um, Eastern influences, um, gypsy style as well. You know, boho can be vintage for those of you that don't like um, more of a modern take on things. You know, lots of um, jewel type colours, beads, um, all of that kind of thing. Now, I've pulled out some papers that I think fit the boho bill. Um, I've got these two sheets here. Um, that's what they look like um, on the back. And this is from a set called Eastern Influences by Craft Consortium. You've seen me use this throughout the um, month. If you Google www.craftconsortium, um, the pad is called Eastern Influences. So that's that one there. I just I just love that. Um, I've also um, been using as well papers from the Eastern Opulence set from Do Crafts Paper Mania. Now, Do Crafts have just very, very recently gone out of business, but this pack is still available via um, Amazon. Um, I've also got um, a couple of pieces of paper here that I personally think um, fit the boho style, more of the vintage style. You know, boho to me is sort of, you know, bold flowers, butterflies, feathers, all of that kind of thing. So if you're into more of a vintage style, perhaps something like this would fit the bill. I've also got this pad, which I completely forgot um, I had. Let me just move those out of the way because that's flashing. This is a pad that um, I bought from the works last year. Um, it was only four pounds um, and this is just so typically boho. We've got lots of um, feathers and dream catchers. Um, here we go. I mean, this speaks so much of, of boho to me. Absolutely beautiful. So you could use something like this as well. So, you know, have a look and see what you've got. Now I'm going to be using a sheet of craft cardstock for the um, base of my book. Um, this is A4 size and it's 280 um, GSM. Use the thick thickest cardstock that um, you've got. It doesn't matter about the colour because we're going to cover it up anyway. Um, now the centre of my um, piece of paper is is here so I'm going to go one and a half lines either either side um, of it um, it doesn't matter what size paper um, you're using use um, whatever you have so let me just have a look and I'm going to go one and a half the other way as well so that um, will create my spine now this is important once you've scored your lines whether you've done it on a scoreboard or you know just using um, a, a, a bone folder something like this the tip of a, a bone folder you want to fold your spine in this way not upwards like that because if you do it that way um, your paper will crack so I'm just going to fold like that and then I will end up with um, nice smooth lines there we go um, and no cracking um, so you know that's um, that's the outside of my book now I have also the, the, the spine of my book here measures one and a half um, centimeters so I've cut myself another strip of cardstock so here we go you can see that I've cut myself another strip which is just shy of one and a half um, centimeters and what I want to do now is just glue that down um, inside my spine so I'm just going to use some um, glue for that this is um, Fabri-Tac so we'll just put um, a small amount just down the center like like this we're going to cover this up anyway so it doesn't have to be particularly neat but I do want it to um, hold in place and then I'm just going to glue that down like like so just make sure that um, it's in the right the right place like that 
So the spine of my book is now dry um, and I've decided that I'm going to use these two sheets of paper to cover um, my journal. I'm going to use the plainer one on the front of the journal and the patterned one on the inside for the reason being that I might want to add some further embellishment to the front and I think it would get lost on this one here. It's just too patterned but I just think it would be really complimentary to have this um, on the inside. So let me just pop that to one side for the time being. Now I don't know whether you can tell the um, pattern on my paper is completely symmetrical so I'm just going to use the outside here um, as a guide because um, I don't want the um, paper covering the whole of the um, front of the journal and I don't want it going all the way to the edge of the spine here either because it would just make it really difficult to um, fold so I'm just going to draw myself um, a line there I'm then going to take um, the paper the, the cover over to the other side and I'm going to do the same um, again Again. So we'll just make a mark there and I'm just going to trim that with my paper trimmer. So I've now got um, a panel for the left and a panel for the right and with a bit of a gap um, either side of the spine that you can see there. Now I want to get this as symmetrical as I possibly can. I've been having a play um, around with this. Let me just check that um, I'm on screen and I just think that the two points there are what I'm aiming for so that the cover is symmetrical because I know that if it's not that that's going to really bug me. So I want it there like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some um, glue. I'm just using um, three in one and I'm just going to apply some all over the front of my journal, making sure that I get plenty um, to the edges like, like this. Draw a line down there like, like that as well and then fill in um, the centre. Plenty on the centre as well. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my finger then just to smudge that glue to the edge like this because I don't want it um, coming unstuck. So we've got that like, like that. That should do it. And then I know where my points um, are going to be. So it's going to be there like that. Make sure that I'm in camera shot for you. So about there like that. So I'm going to flip it over and just make sure that um, I've got enough to cover the edge of my, my book like this. Press that down and then I'm just going to use a lollipop stick as a bone folder just to smooth that um, down. And then I'm just going to um, put a piece of deli paper on top of this and weight it down underneath a heavy book just for um, a minute or, or two. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing with the other side. And as soon as I've done that, I shall be straight, straight back. So my covers are glued down now and I just need to trim off the excess. So I'm just going to do that with scissors and just use the outside as a guide. Just be really gentle about it. Take take my time just to make sure I don't cut into the, the cover. So I'm just going to do this all the way around. So you can see I've done exactly the same to the front and the back now of my journal. Isn't that just gorgeous? I just love how those um, fabrics look, um, those papers look together. Now you'll probably be able to see that um, I've drawn a line down the centre of my spine and that's just so that I can add some trim. I've already added it to the one side um, and that was because I forgot to um, press record um, and um, what I'm doing is I'm lining the holes here up with that central line just so that I make sure that I get my lace straight. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some glue just in the centre of the spine. I'm, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rest of it. Um, in a second so I just want it um, to the spine it's itself um, at the moment and again I'm just going to spread that out and that's just so that the um, glue doesn't bleed um, through the lace and then I'm just going to use that central line I can see through it you see I'm not sure whether you'll be able to um, see it here and um, the same there and I'm just going to stick stick that down and that should make sure um, that my trim, my lace is, is nice and uh, central. And then what I'm going to do is just pop some deli paper on top and then weight it down again with um, a heavy book. 
So this is what this spine looks like now. You can see that it's glued um, to the spine, but I've got this bit um, hanging over the edge, exactly the same on the other side um, as well. Now what I want to do is focus on the um, inside first. And I'm just going to add a bead, a bead of glue because I can use this um, as a guide before I trim it off. So I'm just going to add some just to the edge here, like, like this, pulling that lace out just so that I can make sure that this gets nice and um, stuck down um, well and then I can just use that line there um, as a as a guide and again I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to spread that out with my finger just so that I don't see any of the glue coming through the lace and just gently um, smooth that down just so that that's held um, nice and firmly in place and I can use the deli paper as well just so that I can um, press it down and make sure that that's firmly firmly stuck and then I can move over to um, the other side if you've got any that you feel sort of you know comes outside of your lace as well now is the time just to um, remove it and I'm just going to do exactly the same on this side here as well so applying plenty of glue under here like like this and then just using the lace on the other side just as a as a guide and again whoops a daisy just spreading that out with my finger just so that it doesn't bleed through to the lace and again just gently pressing it into into position You've got a bit of bleed through, but nothing, nothing too, too major. And then I've got um, a microfiber cloth here. I can see that some of the glue has spilled out here. I'm just going to rub that, um, that off. So that's glued down really well. And I'm now going to do exactly the same thing with um, this side here. So again, just bringing out um, my glue and just taking it right, right to that edge like this just to make sure that that's firmly stuck stuck down and then just bringing it out a bit here as well and then again I should just smooth that down with my finger just to make sure that um, I limit the amount of uh, bleed through on the front of the the lace like like this and I'll do exactly the same with this side. So that's dry now and I'm ready to just trim off the ends. Just being careful um, about it like, like this. I just think this lace is so pretty. It just works beautifully with, um, with this journal. And then I need to decide um, whether I want to add any further embellishment to the um, front or not. I just love how that looks. I'm just going to take the opportunity to round off the corners like this because it's thick cardstock it's going to take some punching there we go I'm going to need to press down hard but it is doable and this will just make um, the journal far more durable because of course it's the corners that take the wear and tear now I've just grabbed my gold pen and I'm just going around the outside like this as well just to finish the um, edge off and I'm just going to go all the way around so that I can set this aside to dry as well. And this will just give it a beautiful, beautiful finish. So my gold's dry and you can probably tell as well that um, I've decided to flip my journal over the other way. Um, with the lace border, I don't know whether you can tell that the um, front cover isn't um, symmetrical anymore. And I know that that is the kind of thing that is really going to bug me. Um, so I'm going to have it the other way around. And I actually really like the way um, that that looks. So don't be afraid to change your mind during a project. Um, you're probably also wondering what I had set off to dry i decided that i was going to use this um elephant here which was from one of the other papers in the same paper pack and i thought that would be perfect um i've applied dimensional glue to it um as well so that was what i had set off to dry but it gets lost when it's on its own so that isn't doing it for me and i just don't like it um on the cardstock either 
But I'm really glad that I did this because it's made me go rooting through all of my things to see what else I could find um, to embellish the cover. And what I've come up with is um, a doily, which um, I think goes with the mandala um, style um, that's going on on the front cover and also ties in with the lace that I've used for the spine. And then I found a couple of other bits and pieces that I've got in my stash that I can use to um, layer with it as well. This was just um, a, an embellish that I got in one of the Artful Days um, boxes going back, oh, I don't know, probably about three um, years. And I've also um, found this pretty embellishment here, which was a button. It had a shank, which I've just cut off with some um, wire trimmers. Um, and I'm going to glue that down. So let me just take that off there because I don't want that um, getting onto my book um, or my lace. Now I'm going to glue this down with some um, E6000. You need something sort of, you know, quite um, heavyweight. Let me just just put um, a piece of deli paper underneath so here we that. go we've got some deli paper so I'm just going to put a blob of e6000 just in the center there like um, like that let's just rub that bit off where's my um, embellishment gone here and I'm going to apply a small amount to the back there um, as well put the lid back on because this stuff dries up really really quickly and then I'm just going to set that in place. And this is going to take quite um, a while now to dry. So I need to set that off um, somewhere safe. And that will just go on top um, of my doily like this. And that will form um, the focal image for the front of my journal. And I just love how that looks. Now I've just got some regular cream um, paper, copier paper here. And I'm just going to make my signatures out of this because I'm going to have this one here as um, a notebook. Um, now, I've cut myself um, 10 sheets, um, two lots of 10 sheets. So I've, I'm having two signatures um, in mine. And I've just measured slightly shorter than um, my notebook. So I've cut my pages here to eight inches um, by um, 5.2 um, inches. So that's what I've got there. Um, and as I say, I've just folded ten two lots of 10 sheets over. So that's what I'm going to be um, using. Now, one little tip for you. I trimmed these on my paper trimmer and every two um, pages, I just went down half um, a, a millimetre just so that I don't end up with sort of any awkward um, overhang so that's why mine um, are looking straight I just find it easier to do it that way um, than trimming it um, at the edges afterwards I mean you could just put a ruler and um, trim it with a knife um, but I just find it easier just to sort of go down half a, a millimetre every couple of pages and um, and then they just seem to to fit now, of course, I could have made um, one signature and then I'd have just been able to add um, three holes to insert it. But to add two, I've cut myself a template here and I've just used um, my scoring board and of course um, my spine let me just turn it this way round um, I've got too many things on my desk at the at the moment was three um, score lines apart so I've just scored it exactly the same so that's how um, I've done that um, it's also the exact same length as my my journal here and that's important and what I'm going to do is I've got um, a pencil Let's just um, measure this. So this is just under or just over eight, um, eight centimetres. So let's just move that. Oh, whoops, Daisy, wrong way. So let's just move, move that down so that I can find the centre point. So my centre point is going to be four. And then I'm going to draw a line at one and um, seven. There we go. So we can draw um, a line across Cross there like like that so this is just um, a really easy template we'll do this one this way around just so that I can get it fairly fairly straight there we go and then I'm just going to eyeball this so I'm going to have one there and one one there and then we can just use the ruler and this is just so that I get my signatures um, in the right in the right place. Whoops, a daisy. This is the fiddliest bit. So we'll draw a line there and a line there. I'm just going to have that slightly lower down. And then I'm going to turn this one round um, the other way and use that 
as my, my guide. So I've got my line there. We need one there and one there. So I'm just going to pop my template just um, into the centre of my spine and I'm just going to clip it down with just some of these clips just to hold it um, in place. Um, make sure that that's sort of firmly um, in the centre like that. And then I am just going to grab myself um, a phone book. Can't find my phone book, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using a cutting mat and I'm just going to poke some holes where I've made um, those marks. So one there one there and this is where my signatures um, are going to be just be careful with this the pokey tool is incredibly sharp do the same with all the marks that you've made this is really easy it looks a lot more complicated than it really really is so now I've unclipped um, my template and what I'm going to do is I've marked um, the centre of my page here and I'm just going to draw a fine um, pencil line just down here. Um, you'll see why I'm doing this um, in a second and I can rub this out um, afterwards and this will make it easier so that I can lay my template and I can see my hole and um, if I've, I need to do that um, a bit darker because I can't, um, I can't see it. Just do it darker, darker here, because if I lay my template um, over, I can see the hole there and then I'm just searching for my line and it's there. Um, and so I'm just going to poke my holes like, like that. So I have one, one there, one there, there we go, and one just make sure I've got my line one there. There we go. And I can make sure that I've got my pages together and I can poke right through um, all of them like this. And that should um, line up really, really well. And we'll see if this works in a second. It should do. There we go. So if I put my signature back in, let's see, line up my hole. So that should marry with, with that one there. And then that one should marry with the other hole, which is just, I can see it just, just there. And it is, that's, I can see that that's right. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing now with the, with the other one. So we'll pop that to um, one side. And so what I want to do is draw, mark the center, which I know is, is four because I've cut these to eight. I hope this is making sense. So that is my, my center there. And to draw myself a line, making it um, darker here where I need to um, be able to see it. And then I can pop my template back over and I'm going to marry it up this time with the um, second hole. Just make sure I can see those lines. I can see that line there, there and there. And so again, I'm just going to and just make sure that I've got it there. There we go. Just going to poke, poke my holes. There we go. One there, one there, and one. Let's see the line? One just there. And again, I'm just going to make sure I hold my pages together and poke that um, all the way through. So there we go. So now we can start um, sewing these these in. This is just my way of doing it. Um, there might be um, easier other ways, but this is just my method. So now it's time to sew the first signature into the journal. And I've cut myself some waxed linen thread that's approximately two and a half times the length of my journal. Um, and I've got myself a big, thick darning needle here. I am going to go in through the centre, find my centre hole here like like that then I'm going to need to hold onto the tail so that I don't lose it and then I need to come in through the top here like this so that's my top hole I'm going to find the top hole on the signature as well hold onto the tail there so that you don't um, don't lose it and then we're going to go back in through the other end here like this and I need to find the other hole um, that I created 
Um, so that's that. And then I need to come back in through the um, centre again. So I'm going to come back in through the centre. This is the hardest part. Find the centre on your journal. Now I've got one tail this way, th this side of the line. So I want this one to be this side of the line, like, like that. I can do away with my needle now. And now I just want to pull it one this way, one that way, nice and tight. Um, I don't want it baggy um, at the at the back. You can see I've loosened that now. So I'm just going to pull it, pull it tight again, make sure again that that's nice and tight. And then I can tie myself um, a knot. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with the second um, signature. So one knot, um, two knots, there we go. And then we can cut um, the excess trim. There we go, we'll leave that um, about there like that. Then of course I can grab an eraser if I can find one and just get rid of those marks that, that I made because I don't need those um, anymore. There we go, and now they're, they're gone. And so I'm just going to do exactly the same thing with the other signature. So you can see this time I've rubbed my pencil marks out already. So I'm going to go in through the centre, find that centre hole, which I do believe is there. Yep, yeah, it is. So we'll go in through the centre, leave a tail. And of course, we've got to find the other hole. There we go. There it is. Come back in there and through the through the paper stuck oh my needles come out let's just um re-thread that because we've got a nice big eye this is really easy to to thread there we go back through the other end find the other hole there there it is there if you can hear noise outside, the oil man's just um, arrived to fill up our oil tank. At least oil is nice and cheap at the moment. And then in through the centre again there, like, like that. This is really hard to show on camera. Go on, can't get it through the hole. And then I've got one that side, so I want my thread um, this side um, again and again I'm just going to pull those nice and um, nice and tight so we'll tie tie a knot tie another one there we go and cut that off there as well so now I've got my two signatures in my journal now the one thing I do want to do is just go through all of my pages and I just want to round the edges and it's actually easier to do it whilst it's actually in the journal um, than it is outside of it well at least I think it is anyway so I'm just going to go through all of my pages like this it won't take long but it just finishes everything off um, really nicely now, before I add my embellishment to the front, I want to add a pocket to the um, inside of the journal here. I'm going to use this um, envelope here, which was given to me in Happy Bell ma Mail by my friend Debbie. I'm just going to trim it just below um, the seal mark. So that's just a really nice size for my journal. I'm just going to move that out of the way a second because I found um, this paper here in the same paper pad, pad and I want to um, cover the front with this elephant um, here. Now, now, that will centralise just absolutely perfectly. So I'm just going to add some glue. Um, I'll just use a glue stick and a bit of um, Fabri-Tac for that. There's my glue stick. I just need to find some deli paper. Here we go, this will do. And I'm just going to apply glue to the front. Concentrating as usual on the sides. I'll add a bit of Fabri-Tac to this um, as well, just around the edges, just to make sure that it doesn't come unstuck. And then we can use that just to pop something um, in the in the front, just to make a you know our journal look a bit more a bit more interesting. There we go. Let's grab the the glue. Oh, come on! Can't get the lid off. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of glue around the edge, like like that. Peel, peel that off Oop. and then I'm just going to stick this in fact let me just take that, that page out it'll be easier to work on that way and I'm just going to stick 
it down here in this, this corner here. And then I can trim around the edges, just being really careful that I don't cut um, into my, my envelope. So again, I can use the lollipop stick as a bone folder. My bone folder is buried under the mountain of mess that I currently have on my, on my desk. So there we go. And then I'm just going to really, really carefully now cut, cut that out. As I say, just being careful that I don't cut um, into the envelope. I think that paper just coordinates absolutely beautifully um, with that. Now, instead of punching a hole, because I don't want to chop into my elephant, I'm just going to round the corners just on the top here like this. I can't do it um, on the bottom, of course, because I would chop into my um, envelope. And then I'm just going to um, stick that down. I just think that's um, finished that off really, really nicely. And again, I'm just going to use a glue stick um, to do that. So we'll add some, and then I shall apply some um, Fabri-Tac as well, just to the edges. So make sure I've got plenty of glue all the way, all the way round, like like this. And um, and then we'll just add some Fabri-Tac just around the edges, just because I know that um, it's not going to go anywhere if I if I do. Add a bit in the centre this time um, as well. Bring this back. Let's just peel that, that off like that. And then I just need to be careful that I actually pop this down in the right place. And that it's not, not wonky. I love how that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm just going to wait that down now for um, a minute or two under a heavy book. So now I'm ready to add the embellishment, which is now glued um, properly. So I need to decide where I want that to go, um, how high up I want it to go. And again, I need to dig out the E6000. Um, so I think I want it something like, um, like that. I definitely want it in that orientation. So let's just grab a piece of uh, deli paper um, again. Um, and so I just need to centralise um, that. So we'll add a blob of um, E6000 again, just to the, the back here. There we go. Stick the lid back on quickly because this stuff um, dries up and it's just handy um, to have. And so we just need to stick that down. And again, I'm just going to have to pop that to one side um, for that to um, dry. In fact, I'm thinking I can probably, that doesn't look very central to me. Let me just have a play um, around with um, with this. It's just probably that, um, I think it was. So there we go. I think that's, um, that's good enough. And then I'm going to um, just decide where I want that to go on the um, journal, I think, about there. Isn't that just so pretty? Um, and what shall I use to glue um, that down? Being fabric, I think I'm going to use um, Fabri-Tac. And what I want um, to do is just make sure that I've got um, the glue just in these areas here as well, just so that it doesn't sort of flap and stick up too much. I'm going to apply plenty to the, the centre because you won't be able to see that because it will be hidden by the um, flower. So we'll put plenty on there and then we can just add some here just to these areas where it's slightly thicker. Can you see what I mean? So I'm going to go all the way around like like this. I think I've already applied some there and there as well. That should that should do it. And then I've just got to remember where I wanted this to to go. I think it was there, like that. Just make sure I've got that nice and um, and centralised. And then I'm just going to have to leave that now um, to stick. I think that's so pretty. It's beautiful. Now I've added a couple of tags to the pocket, so that's what um, those look like. One has got one of those um, circles that I punch out. So um, let me show you a circle like this, and then I just um, fold it um, in half. I'll show you like 
like this. I was experimenting with this to see if I could um, use it for um, the closure, um, but I've decided not to. So that was just um, glued onto the um, top of the tag like that. Um, then one has got um, an eyelet punched into it. This one is double sided. This one has got playing card stock um, on the back. So those will just pop um, in there just as little embellishments. And the only other thing I want to do to this um, is add a closure. Um, I'm going to use eyelets to, to do this and just pray for me that I don't muck this up. Um, in fact, let me take my um, tags out to start with. Now I know that the central point is here. So I'm just going to um, go mid center of this line here. Of course, mine's the same on the front and the back. So about, about there like that. Whew. And then I'm just going to add a little brass um, eyelet um, because it matches the embellishment there. So I'm just going to try and squeeze this down. And this is where sometimes it can go horribly um, wrong. So just keep your fingers crossed that I don't screw screw this up. So I'm just going to squeeze, squeeze this down. And I'm going to do it a bit at um, a time. You see, that's perfect. Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, I'm going to give it um, a bit more of a squeeze and then I'm going to do exactly um, the same with the back um, as well. And then it will give me the opportunity to pop something through this to tie it together to keep it closed. So let me just show you, I've done exactly the same with the back as I've done with the front. Um, my pages were symmetrical, so it was really easy to line up. Um, I've also as well added um, another pocket on the back just so that everything is symmetrical again. And I just love how we've got this design here and now um, those mirror each other. I love that. Now I've decided I'm going to use some sari silk um, as a closure. And the hard thing I'm finding is trying to decide which colour to use. Of course, I've got a lot of white, but I think as a closure, that's just going to get dirty. So I think I'm going to use um, this one here. Um, let me just trim that off there um, because we've got it thins at the one end. And I'm going to chop this in half. Um, this was Happy Mail from my friend Debbie. So thank you, Debbie. I just love all the bits that you sent me, which I'm finding really fun using. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just thread this through like like this and then loop it through um, and I've chosen this colour because it goes with the brass there so that I'm not introducing um, any more colours I think that goes really well um, the other colours just weren't quite um, right we'll add the other one through the other side as well through the back there we go. And so that um, is my, my closure. So now um, I can just hold the journal closed like like so. I just love how that looks. That's just so beautiful. So I'm back a couple of days later and I just want to give you a flip through of this journal here. I've been busy making others as well and I'll show you those um, in a second. Um, so this is this one here. I just love it. Um, just look at the spine. It's just so beautiful. I love the embellishment um, on the front. Um, we've got the um, little tag pocket um, on the inside front cover and the back um, cover as well. And this one is just um, a notebook. Just using um, cream coloured um, nice quality um, paper so that's that one there and then I've made some others as well. Now this one here was made using the floral fabric that I showed you at the beginning of the video um, it's not quite finished um, so that's how it looks front and back this was just some of that um, floral paper and um, this paper pack was £2.99 um, less than £3 from the range I do believe or the works one of the two um, and I do want to add pockets and that kind of thing I haven't um, had time to finish this off and this time I've added um, caddy paper which is um, watercolour paper um, as the signature just a, sig a, a single signature this time just because the paper is um, significantly um, thicker I just love that again a sorry silk um, binding closure um, and I do want to add um, some kind of um, gypsy um, embellishment to the front just to give it that bow 
boho look i've not glued anything down i just want to take my time to you know put the pieces together so that's um another idea then i've got this one here um using the paper pack that um i had from the works um again it's just got um a sari silk um closure i've used um eyelets on all of these just um as the closure and again i've just added burlap lots of different laces and trims and things that i've pulled out of my my stash um i haven't got a, around to decorating this one here either but again um i've just put um watercolor paper um inside this one this one here um you can see that this is a much um smaller size this one and the other one here um this one's slightly wider so let me just share, uh, tell you what this one measures this one is five and a quarter by um five and three quarters oh hang on a second i've um, lost my butterfly um and this one here is let's have a look let's um, measure it this way first this one here is four and three quarters um by five and three quarters um so you know just use what um whatever you have i mean i just made this here to fit um the papers that um that i had because of course the um paper pad if you remember from the beginning of the video was um elongated um so that that's um, that one there and again you know I'll add more embellishments to, to these at um, a later date and then finally um, I've got this one here which way round do I like it I think I like it this way round and I've just added um, some trim that I got from the scrap store as a closure for this one here because the colour um, just went really well um, this was some um, trim that I had um, from um, Hobbycraft at Easter about two or three um, years ago which I've used it just went really well with the papers that I've used um, for this one here and again I've added um, mixed media paper to to this one here so you know these are just absolutely great for, for journaling or, or watercolour but I just had so much fun um, making these and again I do want to add some kind of focal image to the front of this um, and maybe some further um, embellishments as well I think I like it that way round um, but I'll do that um, at a later date but I just hope I just wanted to show you um, all the different ideas with all the different papers just to show you how you can interpret um boho so many different um ideas so I hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's given you some um, more ideas as to how you can interpret this month's boho prompt. Um, these journals and notebooks are just so much fun um, to make. And you can see here that, you know, there are just so many different surprises that you can use to create these. Um, so go and have some creative fun. If you enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see See you all again soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.